Welcome to my lectures on statistics for nuclear medicine. Uh, I'm Richard Lawson and I'm going to be presenting this series of lectures to you. So if you listen to them all, you'll have plenty of opportunity to get used to my voice and this opportunity here to match the face to the voice. I should point out at the start that I'm not a statistician, so I don't have any formal qualifications for teaching statistics but I'm as a medical physicist working in nuclear medicine, I have plenty of experience of applying statistical tests to real nuclear medicine situations. As well as being an honorary professor in the Department of Radiography in Salford University, my main job is as a consultant medical physicist in the Central Manchester Nuclear Medicine Centre, where I've worked for over 30 years. So I think I appreciate the problems that uh, people working in nuclear medicine face and I certainly realise some of the difficulties that people face in understanding statistics. You may be thinking, why on earth do I need to study statistics at all as part of a nuclear medicine course? Well, I can give you three reasons for that. Firstly, uh, in the modern medical practice we have to use evidence-based medicine which means that we have to use techniques which have been proven to be effective for our patients. That certainly means that you're going to have to learn to read the scientific literature uh, and to understand papers where they are using statistics to validate their results. That means that you need to understand the results presented in those papers and know how to interpret them, even if you don't have to actually perform the statistical tests yourself. The second reason is that if you go on to study at master's level, at some point you will have to do a project of your own, and that means collecting some data which undoubtedly will involve some statistical analysis. So at that stage, you will have to learn how to choose the appropriate statistical test, how to apply it, and how to interpret the results. But thirdly, and probably most importantly, you'll find that statistics plays an important part in everyday nuclear medicine work. All sorts of things that you do routinely actually involve statistics. Uh, for example, the answer to some of these questions. Um, is the result of this patient's test significantly different to the result that we got last time the patient was here? How many counts do I need to acquire in this blood sample in order to get a measure of the radioactivity within it? What is the precision of this measurement of the patient dose in the isotope calibrator that I'm about to inject? Why do I need to acquire some nuclear medicine images for such an awful long time? And how many counts do I need to acquire in a gamma camera flood image in order to get an accurate measure of camera uniformity? That's why I've taken all the examples in these lectures on statistics from routine nuclear medicine situations which I hope that you will be familiar with. In that way, I hope that you'll find this series of lectures to be relevant and useful to your needs uh, in nuclear medicine. And hopefully, you won't find it as daunting as some might fear. Finally, if you happen to be viewing these lectures, but you're not directly involved in nuclear medicine, that doesn't mean you won't find anything useful in them. The techniques that I shall describe are useful in all branches of medicine and indeed in many other non-medical fields as well. So it can be equally applicable to you, even if the examples aren't quite so directly relevant. So I hope that there will be something interesting here for everyone. And you never know, you may even find at the end that you find statistics is interesting after all. <laughs>